What's happening guys? Nate Hills here coming at you with a bike build video. Uh, I had a lot of requests to see what I'm going to do with this thing. So I'm going to make you guys a video and tell you all about how and what and why I'm building my bike the way that I am. Brand new SB130. Just got it today. I'm stoked in this thing. Uh, excited to build it up and I'll bring you guys through the process. I'm going to drink some tequila and uh, build a bike. Hopefully you learn something. So pay attention. Full disclosure guys, uh, I am super fortunate to work with uh, some of the best companies in the bike industry. Um, these guys have kicked down product to make this build a reality. Um, so just want you guys to know that I do work with these companies. Um, you know, that said, these are companies I chose to work with and I put their parts on my bike for a reason. But I uh, just want to be clear on that. Uh, the only thing that um, is not sponsored product are my pedals. And I can't remember the name of the company that makes them, but I think they make like fishing poles and no one's paying me to do any of this this is all for you guys uh, everybody always is asking me for bike jacks and build videos and that sort of thing uh, I have no affiliation with uh, Milagro they just make delicious tequila the first thing I'm really gonna do is put uh, my driver post on the bike that way I can clamp the thing in the stand and get some purchase so then I can have my way with it right so I'm running a uh, 150 reverb on this Yeti has protection on their down tube, obviously for rock strikes and that sort of thing on their carbon. What's really cool is they've actually put this little hatch in here so when you install your uh, dropper post, you can get in here and finagle around with the cable. This used to be a huge pain in the ass. Now it's not. Thanks, Yeti. All right, so now that this thing's installed, I can uh, clamp in the stand and work on my buck. So before any of this build takes place, um, while there's nothing attached to this frame, I like to apply uh, some clear bra to the key areas to keep uh, the carbon frame from getting damaged if you fall down the rocks like I like to do all the time. I bought this roll for 20 bucks at an auto parts store. I'll go through and custom cut the pieces, you know, typical top tube, a little bit of down tube protection. I'll put some of the chain stays. You can buy kits that do this, a lot of people sell them, that sort of thing, but I don't know, I'm kind of a do-it-yourself type of guy. So before I apply vinyl, um, I am going to turn these red. I'm a SRAM athlete, their color is red. This is going on here, call me a nerd if you want, but this is uh, a color that is uh, synonymous with another brand. I'm gonna cover up the orange bits with uh, the red to match my fork, so I'm all matchy-matchy. The easiest way that I've found to uh, do this is I'll take a little piece of the clear plastic protectant and I'll actually stick it over that, okay? Take a magic marker and trace out what you're going for. So I've got this little, this little chevron guy. And then basically you just stick that onto the back side of your vinyl tape and you can cut out a nice little deal and it'll fit over perfectly. And that's how you make everything custom. I know I'm a nerd. Can't help it. But now that matches that instead of this. See the difference? This is what we're going for. So now that the vinyl's on there underneath, trick is not to get your dirty fingerprints over the back of this thing. You just want to try to avoid getting giant air bubbles. Look, matches my hat that I purposely left the sticker on because I'm from the streets. Actually, I'm not. <whistles> Top tube, down tube. I do the cable exits. I like to just do the size of the chain stakes. I smash them over rocks all the time. So just cover that stuff up. Importantly, I like to do uh, the inside here. Um, where the tire can contact the frame because once you get a bunch of mud built up you get some you know scoring here and here from hard cornering when your wheel flexes and that sort of thing so I like to cover that ready to start building and make some uh, cocktails maybe or if this water bottle will fit in here uh, won't what are we gonna do what's the internet gonna do if this doesn't fit in here gotta have the Yeti shot glass Cheers. 
now we got a cocktail. Let's get back to building. Next thing I like to do is uh, install the headset. Oh, I'm just kidding. I'm not a savage. You get what it is, right? Now that I have my fancy press out, I can put the butter bracket in. Mm, butter. They actually make a tool for this. Weird. It's more fun to hit things with a hammer, but this is actually what you're supposed to do. Everybody likes to hate on the press fit bottom brackets on the internet. If you like a pink bike, it's like the end of the world, but I don't know. I've had 25 of them and never had an issue. All right, so I am going to run a MRP SXG guide on this bike. Uh, I ride chain guides on every single one of my bikes. I don't know why you wouldn't. Um, I like having the skid plate on here. Take the rock strikes out. Um, it's hard to pedal when your chain ring is bent to the 90 because you hit something. So I prefer to run the skid plate. Every bike I own for the last 15 years, chain guide, always. Yes, thank you. I am running a 36 tooth chain ring on this bike. Um, this is the gearing that I run on all my bikes. Everybody says it's a huge gear. It's not a huge gear when you have a 50 tooth in the back with a eagle. Uh, it's actually the equivalent of like a, say a 32 with XX1. So I ride a 36 all the time. This is actually the smallest gearing I've run for like 12 years. Gears keep getting bigger. Bikes keep getting more efficient. Chain ring is getting smaller. I'm gonna keep running big chain rings. The reason I do this, honestly, is to optimize uh, my chain line. I never like to be in the smallest uh, cogs back here when I'm throwing power. Um, I'd rather be more in the center of my block for a straighter chain line when I'm actually sprinting. Uh, makes more sense. Spec on this bike is only clearance for a 34. This thing is like a millimeter from hitting the frame. Um, under flex, it probably will hit the frame, so that will void your warranty. So do what Yeti says and put a 34 in here, but I'm gonna live crazy and put a 36 on there because that's my gearing. Um, I am running a stages power meter, so I have this uh, compatible metal crank arm that goes on the other side. Um, my power data comes through the strain meter, goes to my um, head unit on top and tells me my watts, um, all that stuff. Fancy. I am gonna run a uh, Lyric. This is a 160 Lyric. Um, the bike is spec for 150. You're fine to put a 160 on it. it slacks it out another half degree. I think the head angle uh, stock on this is 65 and a half with a 150. So it puts it at about 65. I've always preferred bigger forks. No one ever said I wish it was smaller. <sighs> Got this super high tech um, crown race tool. It's called a PVC pipe. I think that's how I do it in a bike shop. Hard saying. So now I'm gonna piece together on my headset and mark this thing to cut because this is pretty much the only thing you can't screw up because then your fork is useless. I'm gonna make sure that's actually where it is. Check like five times because you can't screw this up. I'll just take a razor knife and score the deal. The reach on this is a little bit longer. Um, part of the new geometry that he's working with. So we'll see how it feels. I might go down to a 40 if it feels uh, a little too stretched out, but I'm gonna stick with a 50 for now. and. Sweet. I didn't screw that up. Uh, I do have a little specialized doohickey here. They have a chain tool that goes inside the stem cap. That way you always have a chain tool hiding in your bicycle on the trail in case something explodes. I'm going to run a carbon uh, descendant bar on here. Uh, same bar around on my bikes, 750 width. So this is a 5x7, 20 millimeter rise, 750. Boom, you might have seen this one in videos, some stickers on it or something. One thing I am pretty particular about is torque spec on the handlebars, stem, all that, uh, especially with the carbon bars. Don't mess around with that stuff. Um, these little torque wrenches are super cheap. Uh, five newton meter, pretty standard um, torque for this sort of thing. And once I assemble everything, get everything straight, I'll torque the uh, stem the same way. That way my cockpit's dialed, yo.
So my go-to grips lately have been Ergon uh, GD1s. Um, this is a soft compound. This is the Slim Grip. Don't know what else to say about them. They're durable, comfortable, lightweight. You've got these little hash marks. Easy to line them up. All right, we're on the topic of Ergon. Uh, they also make Sweet Saddles. Uh, this is a SME3. Uh, pretty much my go-to saddle for all the bikes. Fits my sit bones nice to make it in a couple different widths. It's black, it's murdered out. Uh, something interesting to note about this frame is that Yeti has uh, significantly steepened their seat tube. Uh, a lot of the trail bikes started to get kind of in the back seat and it wasn't optimum for climbing. So I think this is a 77 degree seat tube angle. So that actually helps a lot. Um, I'd find myself, you know, scooting my seat forward in the rails and sitting like on the nose of the seat to get up steep climbs. It should be the standard in, in trail bikes going forward as far as, you know, building these things to actually be good at going uphill. So I am running uh, Eagle X01 drivetrain on this bike like I do on all my bikes. Um, yeah, super durable, uh, pretty flawless system at this point. I can climb all day on it and still have the gear in really fast. Pretty wide range, like obviously everyone's seen the, the pie plate. You can pretty much eat a meal off of that. Get you up any climb with a giant chain ring, no problem. This is the easiest and most satisfying part of the build. Let's see if I can screw it up. I'm starting to look like a bike. I think I need another cocktail. Part of this bike build that's so sweet to me. This is fully hosed on the inside of the frame. Pretty much stick that through, feed it in here, give it some push, and it's gonna pop out at the top. I don't have to use magnets or strings or black magic or any bullshit. It just goes through. Revolutionary concept. Thank you so much, Yeti. Also, it'll keep the cables from rattling and making noise inside the frame. I've talked about this before in bike checks, and this comes from the old downhill days. Um, I always wrap the last piece of my housing with some uh, clear hose on the exposed portion to keep this from shattering this little piece right here that goes to here. I'd rather be riding than working on my shifting, so this is a good technique right here. A roll of this might have been five bucks at the hardware store. I do have a RockShox Super Deluxe handling the suspension business on here. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to working on this thing. Uh, apparently Yeti has made this bike optimized for more progressive shock situations. Along this bike, along with the 150, um, will be better suited to a coil than say the SB55, which is more suited to a uh, less linear um, shock like an air spring. Good morning. It's a brand new day. Nothing changed overnight. Nothing's missing or broken or... It's been pretty uneventful in the garage overnight. You guys haven't missed a whole lot. All right guys, so let's talk about tires real quick here. Um, Definitely will be running a 2.5 uh, Minion DHF on the front. This is what I run on every bike all the time. Um, I usually run uh, XO casing. Sometimes I'll put a double down on, but honestly, in the front, I can usually get away with uh, this guy. So uh, in the rear, um, I might try a DHR. This is a double down casing, a little bit heavier. Uh, I like to run a double down out back, just a little more fly protection. Um, this is a 2.3, I believe. Uh, supposedly this frame will accommodate a 2.5 tire. Um, I might try something a little more narrow. Um, we'll see how it goes, I can always change. Uh, aggressor as well, always a solid choice out back. I've been running these for a couple years. Um, either way, if I want a little more braking power, this guy, the DHR is better. Uh, if I want a little more rolling, um, Aggressor is better, so it depends on what I'm riding, the terrain and all that. Um, I am going to run uh, some Roval uh, Traverse SL carbon wheels. Uh, I have had really good results with these. I've been running them for two seasons now. Laterally stiff, vertically compliant. They don't beat you up when you ride, but they still have those, um, you know, characteristics that the carbon wheels have as far as 
kind of a damp feel to the ride. Pretty much uh, bang for your buck too, like if you're gonna go in on a carbon wheel, uh, this is a really good option. Definitely would recommend these. Um, I do work with them, full disclosure, but I do think this is a solid for the price uh, carbon wheel option if you're going down that road. Uh, these are 30 or 31 um, internal diameter, so plenty wide. I don't see any reason to go much wider than that. I have tested some wider, but I don't think, uh, I think it's diminishing returns at some point. Um, I think the whole plus thing is sort of found its limit and it's getting ratcheted back and that sort of thing. So I think this is pretty much uh, where you want to be for rim width. Get on there. Tight, like a tiger. That's how we like it. So I do run Stan's tire sealant. Sometimes it plugs little pinholes and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it sprays all over my leg. That's another story for another time. Pretty OCD, I like to line my logo up with my valve stem. I don't know why we do this, but I also have been leaving this uh, sweet tag on here. Um, there's lots of speculation as to why I do it. Someone commented that so I can find my valve stem. While that is true, uh, that has nothing to do with why I do it. I just think it's funny because people comment on it. So I'm just gonna keep running it. Nice thing about these wheels and tire combo is that you can actually put them on half-ass pumping your floor pump. Of course, slapping the old Eagle cassette on there. For brakes, uh, I'm going to run some uh, code RSCs. Uh, plenty of stopping power here. Um, I do run metallic pads in these guys. Uh, they make a little more noise, but I think they last longer than the organics and uh, just a little more consistent braking feel for me. Uh, 180 rotors front and rear. Um, I weigh 150 pounds with all my shit on, so that's plenty of uh, braking power for me. Um, I could see going up a size to a 200 in the front for like Whistler or whatever, where there's nearly 5,000 foot descents, but I'm just gonna go ahead and run all my rotor bolts. Wait, we need to be damned. I'm even gonna install it with this thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Nothing quite like fresh minion day. When these tires are brand new, they're sticky, and little teeny pieces of gravel stick to them, and they roost and hit you in the face, and it feels good. That's how you know it's fresh minion day. Uh, one thing that's nice that SRAM's done is they have made this direct mount uh, for a 180 rotor. So I don't know who would run a 160 in front. That sounds like a terrible idea. Before we get too much further here, I'll tell you about another little trick. Um, for keeping your cables nice and tidy. Uh, this is basically heat shrink for um, electrical line application. So nothing makes noise when it's all bonded together. There's a little bit of glue inside of this and you basically melt it on with a heat gun. So I'm gonna go ahead and install the rear brake here. We'll just, you know, cut that off, do that later. Again, huge kudos to Yeti for the internal routing situation that's occurring here currently. There's honestly nothing worse when you're building a bike than fighting with that crap, so. Let's see what happens here. We'll heat shrink that on there. That'll be nice and tight. Nothing will make noise. All right, so much like the front, rear brake has been optimized for 180. So it's direct mount post 180 right here. I mean, what do you do with a 160 rotor anyway? I run it on my road bike. It's pretty sweet for that. Yeah, pretty sweet here too. Yeti has gone ahead and made a foray into the axle game. So super tight, like nothing sticks out in the end. Keep everything tidy for you. Fresh chain, nice and sticky. I've got my limits dialed in. I've got my tension dialed in, uh, B tension as well. Got that figured out, super handy. You gotta have one of these little gauges to see the distance between the cassette and the small uh, jockey wheel there. So you have the chain to the right length. I'm gonna go ahead and put some uh, pedals on this bike. Fishing gear. Always lube your axle. Nobody likes a dry axle. Now I like to put the bike on the ground and just kind of make sure everything is where I think it is. I've gone through a lot of lever positions over the years, but I've increasingly been bringing my levers up a little bit higher and higher. Seems to be so hot right now trend, but it doesn't really matter. Like people try to say that 
one's better for hand pump or fatigue or whatever, but I think that's all a bunch of bullshit. It's whatever you're used to and, you know, set up your bike so it's comfortable and as long as your index finger is straight out and it's getting you into the brake lever and you can reach your shifters, then go from there. Don't overthink the setup too much. Just go with what's comfortable and uh, make some fine adjustments if you need to. Always, too, run these a little bit loose. Um, you don't have to move when you're braking, obviously, but when you crash, you would rather that move than break a lever, so. All right, guys, just some of the finer points here. I'm bleed the brakes. I know, super exciting. And now the part that the internet has been waiting for, water bottle compatibility. I personally never really had an issue. I carry bibs with a pocket, and I can put a bottle in that. Or if I'm going for a really long ride, I'll just uh, wear my hydration pack. I get it. I mean, it's nice to have a water bottle on your frame. It's not like it's going to keep me from going for a bike ride or something or whatever. Yeti has always optimized their design for function. And uh, in the past, you couldn't fit a water bottle on the frame. Now you can. Pink bike is stoked. I do run a specialized uh, cage here. The multi-tool connects on the bottom, so I always have an Allen key um, handy here. Uh, just less stuff I have to think about. I'm going out to ride, actually. What do you think? What should you put on here? Oh, man. But the real test is can you fit this in the frame? Oh, this doesn't fit. What's Pink Bike going to do? <sighs> no, I get it. It's nice to have a water ball in there. Why not, right? Now we're breaking out the, the power tools here. Do this carefully. You don't want to melt anything. What I gotta do now is set my suspension pressures, dial in my air pressure, get all that feeling good, click some knobs, make sure everything's where I like it, and uh, we'll be ready to ride. Burning the brakes. Just a couple of finer points. Gotta do some installing here. Boom. Now it's ready to ride. So one thing I always do is uh, always carry a tube under my uh, seat or attached to my frame somehow. Backcountry research straps, they make hands down the best straps uh, in the business. Sometimes you have to improvise and you have to carry like a burrito or a bottle or whatever. So yeah, lots of uh, good strap solutions. I don't recommend carrying this in your strap, but it's not the worst thing you can carry. Yeah, thanks for watching. Always appreciate you guys. Um, huge thanks to everybody who made this build possible. Uh, as always, Fall Camp Friday, every Friday at 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Tune in, and in the next couple of weeks, this bike will be getting shredded at a popular trail near you. If I didn't answer any questions, uh, go ahead and leave some in the comments. Love to know what you guys think. Uh, throw me some hate, throw me some love. Leave a like if you're stoked on this. Let me know if uh, my tire is on backwards or I put my rotor upside down or whatever. Um, I'm sure there's things you would do different. Go ahead and let me know in the comments uh, what you liked, what you don't like. Um, call me a jerk, call me whatever. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Cheers. <sighs>